Hey everyone, wow, I'm loud. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you got some coffee and water and whatever else there may have been out there. Um, so we're starting up again. So next we have Moshe Zioni. And if you hadn't heard about the Argo CD zero day vulnerability, you are going to now. Thank you. So hello everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I'm honored I'm uh, pretty excited to be here. Uh, to be honest, this is the first time since uh, COVID that I'm actually speaking to a crowd, so that's amazing by itself, and thank you for being here. We're going to dissect the uh, discovery of the Algo CD supply chain attack. Um, first of all, my name is Moshe Tsioni, I said, VP of security research at Apiro, um, doing AppSec security for the past 20 plus years uh, on multiple fields, if it's with uh, AppSec, uh, in, in search response, uh, DFIR, malware analysis, and others. And if you'd like, you can contact me uh, on email or Twitter. I'm active on both. What are we going to go over today is, the, first of all, to lay the ground for the upcoming uh, items of what is Algo CD. We're not going to go full uh, of a full course of what is Algo CD, but just the basics that we'll have a common ground to start from to understand what is the, the uh, attack originated from. Why does the vulnerability that we are going to discuss here matters? maybe more than, uh, than other vulnerabilities, maybe not. And then going through the discovery itself. What are the discovery steps? Some basics about how, how uh, vulnerabilities are being discovered, but also how this specific vulnerability, uh, what led to the discovery of it. Um, eventually, of course, to tie the knot over all, everything, we're going to discuss the attack scenario and some extended scenarios that, to be honest, didn't, we didn't discuss up until now. Um, and then go through remediation steps and suggestions that we can uh, go uh, with uh, long-term remediations as well um, for the better of the Algo City project and maybe other projects. Uh, we're going to sum up everything, and of course, I hope that we'll have some time for Q&A. So let's start with the basics. What is Algo CD? As said, Algo CD is a CNCF project. Um, it's uh, covering GitOps automations and by that continuous delivery specifically in open source, of course, uh, which is pretty unique in this arena. Most of the CD systems are not open source, and Argo CD is maybe the, the, the most prominent uh, example of that as an open source project. Then it's also true cloud native, meaning that it's built for the cloud, it's built to be on Kubernetes itself, and by that this, the platform is very uh, native to many cloud native, uh, native for many uh, cloud applications that would like to have this kind of packaging on common languages, manifests, um, and tools. The project itself is using multiple very common uh, open source projects by itself, like JSONnet, KSonet, Helm charts especially, and by that, this, is, this is makes the curve of loading and um, implementing Argo CD a very, very efficient one. And uh, lastly, it, is, it also allows multi-tenant, multi-users, and by that, uh, we can conclude on what is exactly Algo CD is providing for organizations more than just a CD system, but also covering a lot of security aspects of the whole ordeal. By that, when, when you are discussing security with Algo CD, we are discussing what kind of storing we'll have for our repositories. If, if we have a role-based uh, uh, authentication or we have something else, how do we deploy those kind of instances, especially when we are discussing different environments? That's where GitOps comes into place, because we need to tweak those kind of variables, and by that needs to be automated, or at least as full as we can to be automated. And by that, Algo is providing uh, this kind of uh, health monitoring as well to those kind of instances. Secrets management is part of the Algo CD, I would say, umbrella term, not specifically for the, for the Algo CD project, there are several plugins and stuff that are connected to the Algo CD ecosystem that will provide you with secret management within it, but if not, you, you will also have the native way of, of managing the, the secrets, and we are going to get deeper into that because that's the culprit of um, the vulnerability. Uh, lastly, it is uh, widely connected to different CI and, and other SaaS systems, and that's why Algo CD is so good for many purposes. Why does the CVE that we are discussing right now, 2022, uh, 24348, is important or matters for us? Especially uh, for me, and we, as, as we, are, we are discussing with many of um, our contacts about supply chain attacks, and of course this has been trending on the news, but more than that, it's, there is a specific, the specific um, 
item of why it's being uh, trending. The why is that we have much more detections and we are much, much more aware. And for me, this is an awareness act. Like being into the, uh, discussing the supply chain attack is very, very important. That's not to say that this vulnerability is the mega vulnerability of everything. It's not. Uh, that said, it is a high impact vulnerability and should be discussed um, in a very serious matter, but not to exaggerate, or, exaggerate or, or over hyping it. It is not a, something that you need to uh, call home right now and to understand if you have something. Uh, take the time to understand if you have the limitations and we'll discuss remediation at the end. Um, apart from that, it targets the critical aspects of a supply chain, not, the, not just a supply chain attack, but it also covers the CD system. Uh, by that, it, it comes with a very native way of attacking that. So that means that you do, no, don't need a special port to be open. You don't need something that is out of the default. But you need some, some instances of Argo CD that will be discussed further. And by that kind of infrastructure, that makes it very, very much interesting and, and compliant to the trend of not just attacking the supply chain attack, but also by the supply chain infrastructure. Um, and lastly, on this kind of list of why, why it matters, uh, the utilization of the payload itself is also interesting because we are utilizing Helm charts uh, specifically, but also we'll get to the extended version of what kind of other attacks we have. And you'll see that everything that you are covering here is, as, as said, is using the uh, most proper way of utilizing um, uh, CICD systems, uh, namely, again, the Helm charts. And by that, you'll see the extension as well. Um, lastly, on this slide, the, it, the vulnerability encompasses a lot of what we discussed so far about the CICD systems and its culprits and why it's very important for us to follow up on those kind of attacks. Uh, it's, it, was, uh, it was fixed on January this year, and since then we have seen uh, much more interest about supply chain, uh, not because of that, but we see more and more uh, instances of those kind of attacks happening because it's a very lucrative um, attack paths for attackers in terms of merely ROI. Uh, lastly, as we will see, um, this, this specific vulnerability was actually predicted by the developers. So developers were, so were ready for this kind of attack, at least in the metagame, so they will be able to, to comply with that. That said, of course, nothing is perfect, and by that we found a way of circumventing this kind of, uh, of um, defenses and throwing it all together. Um, so let's discuss the discovery itself. How the research strategy goes, uh, nothing more different than anything else. Th that said, th there is maybe some basics that, uh, that researchers can, uh, can agree on. What is the basic research routine? I split it into three just for convenience, but w this, this is more of a personal uh, thing. But again, we are going over that. But in general, we go through a phase called exploration. We just want to skim through and to understand the ecosystem, to understand the, uh, the code base. Remember, I'm not a developer of Argos CD, meaning that I'm not familiar with the code as much as the developers are and, and the community itself, which is a huge community. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll have to go through this kind of exploration step to explore, to understand the ecosystem, to talk the talk at least, to understand what is, what is going on. Monda, that we are going through documentations and we are going through uh, other items that will provide us more, more insights about how development occurs. Because we are into the thing that, that is called, we, we, we can't go through the old code base. You can do that, but it's, first of all, it's a very boring process and it's more of an of automating process, but more than that, it's not efficient. For you to discuss actually what needs to be secure, to have security reviews, you will have to consider what, what is deserving security review. That means that you have some kind of a risk level for each commit maybe to each uh, feature that you have and by that the, the, to um, enforce the security review on those specifically to some degree that you would like. And by that you'll be much more efficient and that's exactly what we did right now, right here. We, uh, we understood what is going on, what kind of development were on the uh, Argo CD platform until that, uh, that uh, point in time and understood what is what is, uh, what is wrong or what is uh, the sniff test is called? What is smelly a bit? So uh, by that, we'll follow up. After the exploration step that we just covered, we, we actually go through the tutorials themselves and build the model, meaning that we have those, we actually have uh, instances of, of, uh, of Alco CD uh, at, uh, at our lab and by that trying to, of course, uh, play with that, a very basic routine. But, but more than that, to understand what is extended to this kind of ecosystem, what kind of plugins there are, what, what is the default systems, what kind of tweaks you can go through, what is the basic thing that many people are going through once they're using Argo CD. This is an important part because, first of all, once you have a vulnerability, you would like to ask yourselves, 
how common this vulnerability is, how scary it is. And second, if not common, uh, what kind of scenarios will, 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 need to be, uh, will need to be converged into the issue that is, is handled right here, and by that the vulnerability will take effect or maybe a greater effect than before. Uh, so this is the second, the second step, to actually realize the use cases, to draw them out, to, to have this kind of, of imputation of flowcharts. And it's also important because, as we discussed before, we need to be very focused on what we, we, what we would like to research because we would like to be efficient. And by that, once you, we have the use cases placed out, we can actually say, okay, this is the use case or the logic we would like to attack. And remember, once we, someone discussing a vulnerability, uh, many turn to uh, talking about the, um, the actual vector of attack, like uh, a remote code execution or the helm charts. But that's, that's merely important if you don't have the realization of what is the, the business logic that you are going to attack. So the use cases are based on business logic. Mostly, most of the time, and by that you are following up with the dive into the mechanics of those kind of business logics. Uh, some very basic, uh, maybe uh, terminologies here. Sources and six is a very important part of it to understand. Once you have this kind of use cases, you would like to see where, where, what kind of impact it can have at a maximum. Like what is the um, uh, sync of it? That's called sync because the function itself syncs into something like file system, maybe some, maybe some kind of a network traffic, etc. But the source itself is the input that you are providing. So from now on, I'm going to call, to call it input parsing just for the sake of it. But remember, this is a, a very uh, thorough method that, will, that everyone has. Uh, and lastly, development history is very important because you have much more context. You, cover, you are covering that as part of your exploration. But once you have this kind of homing down into specific use cases and by that deeping, uh, di uh, diving into those kind of mechanics, you will also want to have a very good understanding of what, what followed until now to understand what kind of development history were under those kind of features. And, and lastly, as I said, what is passing the sniff test? What, what, this is more of an experience thing, but it's, it's a necessary to understand what kind of attacks are I'm presuming I'm, I'm going to look for in those kind of logics. And, and maybe something else triggered the sniff test as we see right now. Something else, in, in our case, uh, triggered the, the uh, specific uh, sniff test uh, to be positive. Um, okay, so first of all, we are going to go through the parsing itself. So we, we hone down uh, in, into specific use case, but maybe the most common use case of Argo CD is getting a manifest in, and by this kind of manifest, it's par being parsed by the Helm chart itself is being parsed into those, uh, the, those uh, fields, and the fields it's themselves are acting upon that to, to deliver the application and to, uh, uh, after that, of course, to uh, maintain it on the cloud. Now, once you have that, we are going to we are going through the uh, actual Helm charts and understand what kind of quirks we are going to find in this kind of Helm charts. Now, remember that those kind of charts are controlled by the user, so the user can um, can provide Algo CD with any kind of chart that uh, she wants, and by that to follow up on what kind of build that uh, she wants to build by that. And, and we found by that that the uh, installation itself consists of a cluster. If you have uh, the common input of the Helm chart is providing you with all the manifests that you need. And then we found out th that the, uh, an actual discussion that went on the thread themselves about something called the value files on Helm chart. This is a very specific uh, uh, part of the standard that the value fields is a, a list of values that will give you either, um, uh, excuse me, value files, give you a list of, of file paths. Uh, it can also be an HTTP path, so we're going, going to, to go back to that in a second. And those kind of paths are useful because you don't want to have all the secrets and all the values into one place because if you have different environments and if, if someone else, like a different team, like DevOps may, may be controlling this kind of value file and you don't want to mix the two, and it's a very good practice in overall to have those kind of things splitted. So if you have the value files list, there uh, the actual thing that will happen by the Argo CD is that they will take, take those kind of strings and going to search, search for those kind of files or websites and read those, those values from there. The values can be, by the way, uh, either JSON or any kind of YAML, uh, and by that you, can, you have some variability about what can be uh, controlled by those kind of value files. Now, why it's interesting and why it caught our eyes? Because uh, it's important to understand that the, uh, the actual repositories that are holding on the Argo CD system. The Argo CD is split into, into pods. One of the pods is called Argo CD repo server. And this repo server is monolithic, meaning it's, it has some kind of a file structure, a very deterministic one, so you can predict those kind of file structures if you know the application name, that's all you need. 
And, and by that, if you have like some kind of a path traversal to another file, you can read other files on the systems. Now, fortunately enough, on the common system of Argo CD, there is no YAML or JSON file that you can just read from the system and, and gain some, some kind of a God mode control. That said, if the system is multi-tenant and multi-user, as many, many of the common infrastructures are, you can potentially maybe read other files on the system. Now, that's why it, it's interesting. That said, the, it, it wasn't also interesting just for us. It was interesting for the developers. In 2019, we found a thread that was, that was discussing that's exact, the, the, the exact case of this kind of, uh, of exploitation. One, for one, uh, the developer wrote, what is concerning me here is this type of behavior can be used as a directory traversal attack, and he is completely right. Uh, it, potentially, this can, this can be used as a traversal attack. He shows here a uh, dot, dot, slash, which means it will go through, a, through a, some kind of a um, um, uh, parent directory and, and so forth. And they started to discuss how can we start, uh, how, how can we manifest that into code and how can we protect on a sanity check on those kind of values. And they, they commit those values and kudos to, to the team there. It's a very great start uh, to begin with. So you have this kind of notion of security within the developer team. Uh, and they implement this kind of sanity checks on the files themselves. Uh, let's map out what kind of sanity checks are going on on the system and, and by that also how can we foil that. So first of all, there is one file uh, named path traversal, which you can, you can um, of course, understand what it means to do, uh, which goes through several security checks. And the security checks themselves are, are waterfall-based. So if one it doesn't, doesn't, um, uh, doesn't uh, have a uh, true, it, it, it uh, becomes false in the uh, actual uh, test, it, it can be broken. It can be maybe uh, something else, but they try to do it as a fail open, meaning that once you have something, you will, you will kill it as much as you can in terms of cleanup, and, by, and, that, and that way it will be safe to use most of the time. So the first phase and the most important phase is, is what is called file path clean. File path is a Golang uh, uh, library and the clean is a very uh, common way of cleaning up those kind of strings. Once you have a string, you would like to have it very common way uh, by the standard and this is what clean does. So this is the first and maybe the most important phase of, uh, of uh, path traversal cleanup. The second one is the parse path. That's, that way you are going to split the path itself from the file component. Um, and, and step three is that there is, a, is requested under current root, which, is mean, which means that it's going to compare the path that you just broken up for the uh, actual um, value and going to compare it with the, act, with the actual PWD, the uh, directory that the, the uh, uh, system is residing or reading from right now. And by that, if they have a match, it, it's okay. It is a, a subdirectory under this directory. And if not, it's going to fail. Okay, so those are the, the three steps. Um, and by that, oh, I, I omitted the, the last part. It's just going to fix the trailing. If it was just a directory, it will add a slash at the end. Now, so far, so good. We've, uh, we've actually implemented, just for research purposes, we've implemented this code, a very light one, on a different script, and we actually ran through those kind of uh, steps many times on, on, a, on a high level debug system. Um, and this is a very common practice as well, so you have a very rapid way of fuzzing it, may, maybe manually, but at least you have this kind of, uh, you are cleaning up the table from any, any kind of noise from other system components, and by that you can uh, differentiate what, what is actually happening. Um, so we haven't found so much, something very, very crucial on this kind of path. So the path traversal on the face of it works. Uh, that said, there is another part uh, of, the, uh, of this um, uh, kind of cleanup, which is, which is very, very important, is the repository actual um, reading of the repository and by that the Helm chart itself. So where it starts, on, on, on other way to look at it, what calls the path uh, traversal.go? Uh, the actual function that goes there. So the first, the first thing that happens once the value, field, uh, value file field uh, is shown is going to iterate through each of those kind of list items, and each list item is going to go through parse request URI, which is maybe the most important part of this presentation. Parse, re parse request URI is the thing that, that's going to split through what is going to go through path traversal and what is not. Uh, other than that, it's going to check if the path is absolute and not uh, re relative. And, uh, and, and lastly, if the enforced occurrence truth is happening or not. If it's, if it's not an occurrence truth, it's going to change it to current truth. 
and then load the file. And what's happening, uh, it, again, it's going to check for the path is absolute, it's going to go through the security checks, and by that going to return to the, to, to the uh, original code and then load the, the, uh, the, value, the, the value file if, it's, uh, if all went, went well. Now, why I mentioned the parse request URI is very, very important because as mentioned before, those kind of, of values can have HTTP, HTTPS values as well, and for a good reason, maybe you have those kind of values somewhere on GitHub and you want to, uh, to pull from there. As said, maybe it's a different team, maybe it's a different package you would like to load, and by that, you will have this kind of control. This is a very basic GitOps, uh, a very common GitOps um, uh, request. Um, and why it's important, because here, here is the step that you need to be very, very careful and really understand what is going on. So reading the actual docu documentation from Golang uh, parse request URI, as I, as I said, this is a Golang library, nothing uh, related to Algo CD internally, that, that the uh, URI parser is parsing a raw URL into a URI structure. It assumes that URL has received an, an HTTP request. So the URL is inter interpreted only as an absolute URI or an, or an absolute path. If you noticed, um, you, can, you, can you can somehow mix the two and think that the default of parsing the URI is going, th going to be uh, the absolute path, but that's what will happen if I'm going to present an absolute path uh, to, the, to the parse request URI. Simply put, the parse request URI will think of it as a URI, and by that will not, will ignore it as, a, an, as, as an absolute path altogether, so I'll be able to input absolute path and it will never go through the path, path traversal go uh, functions. And by that, that, that's pretty easy for now. Once you understand that the, those kind of application repositories are deterministic, that you can foresee them in terms of if you have the application name, you, are, you, can, you can contrast, uh, construct the whole path to it and by that read those kind of secrets. Uh, and also not mentioning, not mentioning here that the actual uh, um, error returned, if you have an error, it's very verbose. So you can understand from it a lot about the system structure, a lot about, about the files that are residing or not residing, and by that you can enumerate those to have a better, uh, to, to have a better homing down onto to the target that you have in mind. Um, and as said, all of that together comes into a circumvention of the actual uh, platform. And by that you can read secrets uh, of the uh, other applications. And as I said, we're going to go through some extended, if you have the time, some extended attacks uh, besides that. But this is the most uh, important one and common one in, in our discussion. To close up the attack flow, uh, so an, an attacker, which is a user or an authorized user on the system and a different author, authorized user on the system, uh, logs in into the system and provides it with a malicious Helm chart uh, YAML. Uh, and by that, the Helm chart will point into different files. It can be like thousands of files uh, and read uh, different files on the system. And once uh, a file is, um, is processed, uh, as, as, uh, if the system can process a file, it will load those kind of values and will gain insight in those kind of secrets. Uh, and again, it, it's going to, because of the absolute path that we are going to provide it with, it's going to traverse the uh, path traversal traversal and a path traversal algorithm, and by that is going to, uh, to actually get to the files. Then the attacker will read it off screen or uh, under the API because it will be present on, on their new application that they try to build with the Helm chart, and, and the whole circle comes into close. Uh, the extension of, those, uh, of uh, this attack is uh, maybe two extensions. One is that we're not mentioned here, but there is another variation to the attack that the actual Argo CD, Argo CD uh, people found by, by themselves that there is a possibility of the Helm, Helm chart to be uh, presented as a, as a compressed Helm chart. And a compressed Helm chart can also be using a, a potentially a sim links uh, within the files that are within the compressed uh, tarball. And those kind of symlinks can also be interpreted to, uh, to different um, uh, paths, and you can point to different paths on the file system. But again, this is a, a much more extended, I would say a bit more complicated, but, but a very valid attack path. The second one is that not only repositories are, are, are residing in, on the repo server, uh, and one uh, a very crucial example is that plugins are also can be presented, or at least plugin uh, files can be presented on the repo server itself. I won't go into details of why, but this is again a very common scenario once you are installing some, pl some plugins on the system. And if those plugins have values that you would like to keep as secrets, those can be read if they are under JSON or YAML, that can be read by the same attack path. 
Uh, remediation. Uh, so first of all, as, uh, as I said, remediation is the, uh, first of all, you have to have a multi-user uh, on a system. You need to see that you don't have any other users uh, that you are not familiar with or not necessary users to, that will minimize the risk. And of course, if plan for an upgrade for the Argo CD system, starting from 2.2.24 and above, you'll be, uh, the CVE is not relevant to those. Um, in general, the path traversal, uh, traversal ingestion system was completely replaced on, on, as an overhaul uh, by the Argo City folks, um, and by that, it's, uh, the, the attack is not relevant, at least for, for the time being. Uh, this kind of attack is not relevant to the old path traversal uh, issue, and it, it, it is much more robust right now and much, a bit more generic in the way it, it was written. Long-term remedi remediation is more of the, uh, for the Argo City and the community, but of course, the monolithic uh, and uh, flat in terms of permissions uh, file system uh, for the repo server, it's a very dangerous culprit for, for future attacks as well. So uh, uh, I, I would like to see some kind of architectural change. And we, we're actually discussing some of that, those on kind of several threads. Uh, and, um, and lastly, uh, implement a file level permission model uh, for the, if you, especially if you have an RBAC, if you have something that you can, you can control, or maybe from user perspective, so you'll be able to split those into different levels. Um, and for organizations, audit your files, audit your users, so you'll be able to catch those kind of attempts once something is happening and does not supposed to be on the system. As a summary and conclusion for that, uh, Helm chart YAML uh, itself manifests, manifests can contain malicious uh, field, those malicious fields can, can, can lead to secrets revealing on systems that are using multi-user approaches, and uh, since sensitive data can be exposed by that, the path, path traversal was suspected, and also, of course, the, take, the big takeaway here is, is, of course, you need those kind of tests by the community, and if I can contribute something to, to, to the community, this is my contribution. And a special thanks for the Algo CD uh, folks that were more than amazing. I've been through maybe tens uh, of those kind of CVE disclosures. This was the fastest, most professional um, engagement I had in years. Uh, so thank you for that, for the uh, seriousness you take the, your, and professionalism. You take the security of your users and ecosystem. So thank you for that, and thank you for the organizers uh, to have me on stage. Thank you for listening.